Hello Aquarius and welcome to your November Insights video. This video is going to talk you through the major shifts of Jupiter into Sagittarius and the nodes onto the Cancer Capricorn axis and Uranus moving back into Aries. Instead of the usual lunar cycle insights that I do, um, because these shifts will be affecting us for the next 13 and 18 months, they will be ongoing energy. So these are videos that you can refer back to. Um, they will indicate some of the main underlying themes of the coming years for you. So we're going to um, discuss these rather than talking you through all of the ins and outs of Lady Luna's movements like I usually do in these videos. So, let's talk about the nodes. I'm sure you will be relieved to know that the south node will be leaving your sign, Aquarius. It's been there since May 2017, and we know that you have been having a very, very intense few months with Mars retrograding here, with um, you know, being in square to Uranus, we had that catalytic full moon lunar eclipse conjunct your sign, um, conjunct Mars in your sign. We've got Lilith moving through this sign, still dancing with Mars. He's not leaving until the 15th um, of this month. And you have been, you know, one of the signs that is the most challenged and tested um, with the energies of this year, it's all been happening in the fixed signs. So Venus retrograde in Scorpio, Uranus in Taurus. It's all been very personal to you, affecting the key areas of your life, as I've talked about before, you know. Your sense of self, your first house, your seventh house of relationship, where the North Node's been um, for 18 months. Your foundational house, your um, your fourth house of home and family, Uranus has been moving in there, and Jupiter in your tenth house in Scorpio. So it's been a huge time of change, transition, and hopefully expansion for you, Aquarius. You know, hopefully you've learned a lot over this past year, and particularly the past six months, and you know, you're ready for the changes that are coming now. So the node will be leaving your sign, which will be, you know, a relief because when the south, south node transits our sign, we are constantly letting go. The south node is an energy of excretion, of elimination, of release. So you've been shedding the old identity, shedding the layers of um, the old self, you know, being pulled into your opposite energy, pulled into Leo in the seventh house, poured into that energy of heart expansion, of um, union with others, you know, it's very hard when we have the nodes transiting our sign, because we have to balance our needs versus the needs of others, independence versus codependence, um, freedom versus commitment, so it's been a very intense journey for you, so as the node leaves your sign and moves into Capricorn on the 6th of November, it heads into your 12th house and the south node comes into Cancer in your 6th house. So a whole different axis of the birth chart is illuminated and instead of evolving through relationship, now we are evolving through 6th house Virgo themes of health, healing, day-to-day -day structures, routines, work, um, the tangible, physical, practical aspects of our life are really highlighted. And with the node being in Cancer, we can really look at, you know, how we are nourishing and nurturing ourselves and our health through our food. We might decide that we're going to change diet. We might, you know, embark on a complete detoxification on the mental, spiritual and emotional levels. We might decide that we're going to you know, try new healing modalities through nutrition perhaps or through holistic healing, um, something that we've never tried before. Um, 
perhaps we will realise the importance of nourishing our body through the food that we take in. Um, perhaps we'll be looking to create more security in the areas of work, in the areas of structure. So this is about creating a routine that supports and nurtures you, coming into a space of, of organisation and re really understanding that that isn't restriction because we know you like your freedom Aquarius that that isn't about restriction, but really it's about loving yourself enough to take care of your time, to take care of your energy, to take care of your own well-being. Um, this is an energy where we can feel called into service as well. Virgo ultimately is in the sixth house. It's about the energy of being a vessel for the divine, a vessel um, that spirit can move through and um, help others through so you might find yourself clearing your temple your body temple um, but it's very important that we don't go into excess in this area and start neglecting ourself um, because we might be feeling very compassionate very tender with the energies of cancer ignited in our birth chart um, counterbalancing this, as I say, is the south node leaving your sign, heading back into your 12th house, into Capricorn. So this can be a time when there is a lot of subconscious releasing going on. You will be releasing all of the subconscious layers that stop you from embracing the north node energies in your 6th house. This is, can be a time when we're doing a lot of releasing through our dreams, through our spiritual work. So the 12th house can be related to, you know, karmic um, energies, multi-dimensional energies. So we can be exploring past lives. We can be, you know, feeling the need to go within, to meditate, to really cleanse and detoxify ourselves on a spiritual level as well. It can be a subtle but very powerful transit so you might find your spiritual receptivity increasing during this time of kind of blockages and the you know because you are a sign that can be prone to rational thinking as well Aquarius so this can be a time of letting go of that and coming into trust um, the 6th and 12th house axis can be about control and surrender as well so how do we create balance between those energies how do we create balance between discipline and flow in our lives where can we you know find the middle ground here that can be another lesson over the next 18 months as can detoxifying from addictions addictive patterns self-sabotaging patterns and thoughts can be also highlighted with this transit but generally a relief because the eclipses um, I think we might have one more on the Leo Aquarius axis in January, but in general, that focus, um, that intensity that you've been feeling for the past 18 months, you know, we've had some very, very powerful eclipses on the Leo Aquarius axis. So a definite change in tempo for you. Uh, the other big shift, which will be, you know, leading us through the next 13 months, Oh, and just to say that the last time the, the nodes were transiting this space in your birth chart would have been 2000, 2001. So look at the themes that were going on then in the areas that I just described and you might get an idea of what to expect. Um, Jupiter was last in Sagittarius in 2006, so we can look back to there as well, um, where he will be in your 11th house. He's been in the 10th house of Korea ambition and purpose for the past 12 months since last October so he will have been you know calling you to expand in your career calling you out to be seen hopefully because he's a beneficent energy providing you with some opportunities for um ampli you know amplifying your gifts amplifying your um your ability to receive credit for your gifts and talents and for the hard work that you've been putting in um, but also because he's been in Scorpio the sign of endings the sign of death and, and alchemy he might have also been making you feel the need to let go of the old structures in your career the old ways of being seen the old ways of um, sharing your talents with the world so 
normally wherever Jupiter transits is a very blessed area of our chart, but because he's been in Scorpio, there has been a sting in the tail, there's been lessons. So maybe you've been feeling the need to reevaluate or change your career in some way as well during this period. So now he leaves the 10th house and he heads into his home temple of Sagittarius, your 11th house. This is a beautiful place for Jupiter. A beautiful, beautiful place because this is the house of gainfulness. It's the house of wishes fulfilled, of friendships, of, of um, connection. It's the web, you know, the online web or the etheric web that we weave, the opportunities that we draw to us. Um, the web that the you know the web that attracts to us opportunity and um, blessings and you know it's the house of synchronicity as well of course 11 11 11 that kind of energy also comes through with this face of the birth chart so when Jupiter transits here particularly in Sagittarius where he is extra happy his energy is extra amplified this can be a time when your dreams, your goals, your visions are so supported by the universe, Aquarius. It's like Lady Luck is smiling on you, um, for want of a better phrase. <laughs> it can be a time when the, um, the support you need just appears and you can really start to manifest your purpose, manifest your big dreams, your big visions, your big expansion you know the right people come they offer you the right things and it all flows really well as long as you are staying in alignment with your own truth Jupiter and Sagittarius is all about walking our talk being authentic being in our integrity so as long as we do that the blessings can flow and the changes can happen so it's a different energy to the one that you've been working with. And you might find that some of the hard work you've been doing in these areas while Jupiter was in the 10th house, some of the shedding, some of the letting go, some of the rebirthing now starts to um, come to fruition and things can start to just be a little bit easier for you. Um, I'm really getting that sense as I'm reading your chart of, of relief because you have had a very, very challenging year. So the final shift that I wanted to talk to you about is also happening on the 6th of November, so the day before the new moon, um, and that is Uranus going back into Aries. So Uranus has been in your third house during 2011 and up until May of this year. He moved into Taurus, he crossed that you know sensitive cusp of your chart, that foundational core of your chart and headed into your fourth house during the summer from May the 15th onwards. So he's been really rocking your foundations. He's been really shaking you up in the areas of um, family, of roots, you know, maybe you've been having to break through some old limitations in those areas. Maybe you're moving location. Maybe there has been some kind of breakdown in your family structure. Maybe there's been some revelations that have called you to make changes in the way you relate to your family members. Um, perhaps you've had to, you know, detach a little bit from draining energies or people relying on you too much. So he's kind of dipped into this fourth house, give you a bit of a taste of what's to come. And now he's moving back into the third house where he was, like I say, during 2011 up till um, May this year. And it's the house of communication. And Uranus in Aries is all about authentic expression of self. So this is where you kind of, you get to go back and you get to, you know, double check that you learn how to speak your truth during this period. You learn how to, you know, share your unique individual perspective with the world. You, you learn how to share things in your way. And of course, Uranus is your ruler, Aquarius, so your modern ruler anyway. So he, his movements are very important to you. And you, of all signs, have such an individual, unique perspective. You are the originator, you know. You see the future. You see what needs to come into being. You're way ahead of the rest of us. <laughs> so it's really important that you share your, your visions, that you do um, speak your truth and share that out-of-the-box perspective that you have. So it can 
you know, you could be working to liberate yourself around fears of speaking your truth as well during this period, fears of stepping up into that leadership role. Um, but of course, you know, it is when Uranus crosses the bottom of the chart, crosses the IC, it can be a bit like an earthquake. The ground is shaking beneath us and everything feels a little bit unsteady um, because he is such a wild card energy like yourself, you know. So expect the unexpected <laughs> as he shifts again. Expect the unexpected and know that you, ha you are coming through the worst you know, you are coming out the other side of the tunnel now. You are going to start to gain some perspective on all of the things that have been happening. And you'll be able to really turn any wounds, any fears into wisdom as Jupiter moves into Sagittarius. So let's pick a card for you from the Sacred Rebels Oracle deck by Alana Fairchild. And yeah, you know, you're the rebel of the zodiac being ruled by Uranus. So let's choose a card for you for the month. Huh? Very interesting. So trust yourself. So that could not be clearer. It's a very simple message. Um, trust your gut. Trust what you know to be true. Trust in yourself, believe in yourself. Your ruler coming back into Aries, the sign of self. Aries lives on gut reactions. Aries impulsively acts, it knows what needs to be done and it takes those steps forward. So this is a time for you to do the same. Trust in the new beginnings that are happening. Trust in the opportunities that are offered. You will know which ones to take. You will know what needs to be let go of. But yeah, come into that cancer space of owning your intuition, of not denying what you know in your heart to be true for you. And I feel like this is a special message about relationships. You know deep down who is trustworthy and who is not. So don't let yourself be taken for a ride, Aquarius, you know? Don't let yourself, um, don't deny what you know in your heart of hearts to be true. And follow your dreams, follow your big bold visions as they unfold over the coming 13 months with Jupiter in your 11th house. It's a beautiful, beautiful energy. Thank you so much for listening to me, Aquarius. If you would like to connect with me further, you can click the links below this video for my Facebook pages and groups. I'm sending you lots of love for a beautiful, beautiful month.